Right, JDs and Lennelman, we have a very, very interesting one today. Uh, we're going to be getting into some red teaming, specifically breaking down the Havoc C2 framework. I'm going to show you setup. I'm going to show you usage. I'm going to show you a demo. Uh, at the time of testing this, it bypasses my antivirus uh, as well as an updated Windows 11 Defender. Uh, just a quick disclaimer before we get into this, this is all for educational purposes. I don't show hacking or exploiting real infrastructure, and I condemn and do not condone black hat hacking of any kind. This is purely for legitimate red teaming operations and penetration testing against systems you have explicit permission to test. Uh, obviously, I have permission to test all of the systems I show in this video because they're mine and I give myself permission. Now, let's get into it. Firstly, uh, Havoc is really cool. It's a super modern uh, C2 framework for red teaming. And so let's get into the setup initially. Um, so let's say we opened a new tab. The first step is to git clone the repository here. Don't know why that opened that, but anyways, we would git clone this repository. So you run that command. This is all for Kali Linux, by the way. Then you're going to go ahead and run this command here. Uh, this is all in their documentation at this URL. Uh, you can go through, copy paste. It works great for Kali Linux. So you're going to run this, it's going to install all your dependencies, and then you're going to scroll down. Uh, you're going to cd into Havoc. So cd is change directory Havoc. And then you're going to cd team server from inside Havoc. Uh, you're going to run these two commands here. By the way, pause this video, go back if you need to. If you are setting this up, I'm going through it quick for the sake of time. And then you're going to cd dot dot, which brings you back to the parent directory. You're going to run make ts-build, and then you're going to start the team server with this command here. So you're all set up from this point. You're good to go, right? So let's get into actual execution. I'm going to show you how you start it and how all that fun stuff happens. So first step is to start the team server with this command, uh, dot slash havoc server dash dash profile, uh, profiles havoc, yeah. And this file here, by the way, uh, is where your username and password will be. The default login is Neo with password 123, Neo with a capital N as the username. But you can modify them in this file. Um, and the dash V flag just gives us this verbose output. Next, you are going to run dot slash havoc client. That's going to open up a little window for you. And you can, um, you can, actually, you know what? You know what? I'm going to kill this. Um, we're just going to CD into payload. I'm going to show you this all from scratch. We're going to remove uh, daemon. Unless CD. Oh, wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm an idiot. Uh, we are going to CD to Cool. All right, so you're gonna run your server with this. Okay, this is totally from scratch. And then you're gonna run dot slash uh, havoc client. Now you can input these values here. I'm gonna use this setup right here. So you put in your name for the C2 server. This can be anything. The host, your IP address, the port, uh, by default, it's 4056, and then the user and password. If this is your first time and you haven't modified that file I mentioned before, uh, then it's just going to be Neo passwords is password 1234. Connect. And boom, we're in the C2 server. We can see that we have a team server chat. Uh, I can say subscribe, which you should do. Please, I'm broken now. <laughs> So now that we're inside here, we have some really cool stuff we can mess with. Firstly, view, session view. Uh, table is our current thing, but if we change it to graph, we can actually get a look. Uh, obviously, it's not very interesting because nothing's connected, but you're going to see when I uh, hack myself that the device will show up on here and we get a nice little visual view. We have an event viewer. Um, we also have... Boom. We can view our listeners. I've set this listener up. Uh, you can just go ahead and add a listener on here. You can use proxy connections, change the name, um, and maybe remove this if you don't want fingerprinting. Um, so
So to generate a payload, we're going to go to attack payload. Um, the agent will be demon. The listener is just going to be whatever listener you select. I only have listener demo for this video. And we can change where it's actually injected. So how it kind of disguises itself. Uh, we're going to make it calc exe. Same with this one. And just inject it into that calculator process. And um, we can go ahead and just generate this. And just wait a moment for that. Um, generate. There we go. Sorry about that. So it's just going to take a moment to essentially go ahead and compile um, some source code here. It says I've disconnected from the server. I think that's just because I had two instances connected. And we're just going to wait a moment, and then we're going to get a little pop-up to essentially rename that file and save it. All right, boom. Uh, after about a minute, we get a pop-up. We're just going to rename it. We are... <clears throat> we're going to rename it to... Um, demon.exe and just save it to my desktop. Okay. So we now have a payload that can connect back to a listener. Let's go ahead and put that onto my Windows machine. Note this has several antiviruses um, and it's a fully updated system just for reference. So we are just going to wait. <clears throat> wait. <laughs> Just going to pop in an SCP payload and I'll enter my passwords. I'm just not going to show you guys, so I'm going to pause this recording. And we have successfully saved demon.exe to my machine's desktop. I'm going to go ahead, uh, this is the victim machine, and execute that. And boom. All right, we can see no antivirus pop ups, and we can see that I am now able to view my uh, compromised machine here. I can go ahead and um, let's say view, we can do, for example, team server view. We can have a look at the console log. Um, we can do event viewer, which is just up here. But we want to look at loot. And we can see screenshots and downloads. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and we can look at the process list under Explorer. Boom. We can see an actual um, view of all the processes running on this virtual machine. All right. Boom, 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 boom. Sweet. That's pretty cool. What else can we do? Well, we can look at the file explorer um, and actually take a look through my files. And we can mark it as dead or export it. But let's interact for now. And again, note that this is a, uh, this one specifically is Windows 10. I have tested on Windows 11, but it's fully updated and it has external antivirus software. Neither of them detect this. So let's run help to have a look at the commands we've got. Um, and one of them, I know it's somewhere on here. I know the command, but I don't know. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, obviously, we can run who am I? We can see some information. Uh, and now we can do screenshots. It's cool. It kind of auto completes it for you. It's going to send that task to an agent to take a screenshot and should in a moment tell us we were successful or maybe not. Uh, I'm not actually sure how it's... Yes, successfully took a screenshot. Cool. So now if we go to view and we have a look at loot and screenshots, you can actually uh, see it is just going to boom okay we can see that it has successfully captured a shot of my screen um you can view this in a loot directory if you don't want like kind of this weird view they have here maybe if i make it a bit bigger you might be able to see this better 
But you can see that we have actually captured a screenshot. And again, none of this is triggering uh, Windows Defender. None of this is triggering Panda Antivirus, which is the one I have set up on this specific machine. Um, what else can we do, right? Let's have a look at the help menu again. Make this a bit bigger for you guys. And you can see that we have this nice little diagram here. So this obviously is our firewall. And this is the machine. So we can do a ton of things, right? We can um, have a look at sessions. We can get, so we can do token uh, get UID. And we can have a look. We can see that this is the user. Okay. Um, what else can we do? We can transfer. So, uh, like essentially download a specific transfer module from this. We can also upload a file. We can use token manipulation and impersonation. Um, we can also change the user pass, uh, get logon sessions, execute shell code. Um, there's some cool modules on here as well. I won't get very much into, but there's, uh, we can even execute PowerShell commands. For example, we can do Kerber roasting, tons of things, right? And again, I just have to emphasize that this is purely for red teaming engagements. Uh, obviously don't use this on systems you don't have authorization to test on because you will go to jail. Okay, and jail is not fun. So we can also go to the scripts console and we can go ahead and um, actually execute Python. Okay, we can save scripts. Boom. Wait, what am I doing? It's Python. But anyways, you can you can write scripts. <laughs> you know that. You can write scripts and actually execute them on there. And we can also have a look at extensions. Uh, there's things like Privkit. And there are also things here. Um, which will generate USB rubber ducky payloads with the Havoc payloads, which I think is pretty cool. I'm actually gonna go ahead and install that for demo pups. In All right, I, it's not gonna work for the video, of course not. Um, but there's some pretty cool features on here and obviously we can use this pretty undetected on current systems. Uh, the best way to defend against this would be to have um, some kind of intrusion detection system that's looking for suspicious activity like screenshots and things like that. But it is difficult. But I think for the the blue teamers that watch me, uh, the best way that you can deal with frameworks like this, uh, I'm doing it from a VPS as well. So my IP is clean. But yeah, it's just, um, it's really just behavioral based detection rather than signature based detection. A lot of the time, for more complex frameworks like this is the best way that you're going to be able to detect and mitigate this type of attack uh, and keep yourself safe. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. Uh, have an amazing rest of your day and peace.